Hi, today with me I have Dr. Rudy Merck, the CEO of Valenza, the human health company, and we're going to be talking about FlexPro MD. So Dr. Rudy, what is FlexPro MD? Well, FlexPro MD is actually a generic name that we've uh, branded on a joint health product uh, for joint support. And uh, you may, uh, we, we are a B2B business, so you may see it on the store shelf as somebody else's brand, but it would be licensed from Valenza. And FlexPro MD was, was something that we created that is completely new in the joint health business. And it really is so revolutionary and so easy to use that there's never been anything like it. And, and we're very excited about the development. So what are some of the uh, common joint health care products on the market and how does yours differ? Well, in, in joint health, uh, there are basically two major categories. One are pharmaceutical drugs uh, that are like steroids, prednisone, for instance, anti-inflammatory. It uh, is not recommended that you take it uh, for a long time, but it's extremely potent and can relieve uh, joint aches and pains uh, within days. But again, taking steroids over a long period of time is dangerous. Uh, and the appropriate pharmaceutical warnings that you can get on any package or advertisement. Uh, other uh, uh, drugs for uh, joint pain are things like Celebrex, uh, aspirin, Celebrex is a COX-2 inhibitor, aspirin, uh, naproxen, Aleve. Those things uh, are very effective, short-term usually. Long-term use is somewhat pro problematical because of cardiovascular issues and uh, uh, issues with the digestive system, for instance, ulcers. Actually, in, in that class, uh, COX-1 inhibitors, mainly known as aspirin, is probably the most effective drug in that category. So that's one category of, of, of products. The other category is in the area of supplements. And let me include supplements, with supplements, let me include food. So uh, if you're overweight, if you eat too much food, you're gonna have joint pain, okay? Exercise and proper diet is key to good joint health. Supplements can supplement the food that you eat to get the right balance of vitamins and minerals. And for joint health, things like vitamin B12, B2, D uh, can be in formulas to improve overall joint health. Now the classical joint health supplements has been around for about 20 years, and it really consists of glucosamine and chondroitin. And lately there's been some market extensions or product line extensions where they add other ingredients to it, for instance, boswellia, which is an Indian herb that is known to reduce uh, pain. Now, uh, we looked at these things, and glucosamine and chondroitin uh, are very large tablets uh, you have to take several a day, up to four a day. You have a very high salt burden. One of the ingredients is made from ground up shrimp shells. Another one of the ingredients is made from uh, uh, tracheas from pigs. And uh, uh, if you're a vegetarian, obviously you would have problems with that. And also the sources are usually typically China. And uh, there's always some concern about the quality and, and the sourcing of, of those materials. So when Valenza looked at joint health, and uh, we looked at it mainly for a very selfish reason, about seven years ago, uh, I had severe arthritis in my hands and also in, in one of my knees. And we started to look at this completely differently. And we're the human health company, so we're not tied to any particular raw material or ingredient because our factory happens to make this stuff. We went anywhere we could go and we would find the things that were really positive for joint health. And what we found, and Valenza actually started as a botanical extracts company, so why would we look into potential animal products with a company that's in, into botanicals? So why would you look into animal products? Well, uh, it, it, it's, uh, it's a philosophical thing. Now, uh, I would prefer botanical things, and I think botanicals are renewable, 
and uh, you can usually grow them very near a clean thing. But there are some things that the plant kingdom just cannot do. Okay? And so one of the things that we looked at, and one thing that I had a real problem with first getting my brain around, was krill oil. And krill oil comes from a small shrimp-like uh, uh, crustacean from the South Atlantic and the Antarctic. And it itself is a vegetarian. It eats only phytoplankton. It only eats algae and things like that. So it's the very first step on the food chain. And it turns out, if you extract the oil from krill, you get phospholipids. And phospholipids, these are DHA, EPA phospholipids, they, you can take them, they have similar structure to fish oil, but instead of them being in the so-called triglyceride form, they're in the form of phospholipids, and it can go right to your membranes, it can go right to your cells. And DHA is one of the components of cell walls. It's also a component, about uh, more than 40% of your brain mass is made out of DHA. So we, we knew in the literature that krill oil had a soothing effect on on, on joints that, uh, that uh, it was very positive for joint health. And so we looked at that as a potential component. We also looked at a uh, carotenoid called astaxanthin, and many of, many of uh, our viewers might have seen uh, Dr. Oz introduce uh, astaxanthin as a, as a miracle antioxidant that nobody's ever heard of back in uh, 2011, I believe it was. And and at that point, we had already made astaxanthin. And by the way, astaxanthin is the pink color of salmon. Wild Scottish salmon or wild uh, Alaskan salmon, the, the pink color, is due to the phytoplankton that the salmon eat or the shrimp that salmon eat. And it colorizes their meat with this carotenoid. Without that carotenoid acting as a potent antioxidant, that salmon could not make it back to its spawning grounds because the oxidative stress would be too great. So we looked at that as a component, something that reduces oxidative stress. And then we looked at a third component called flexuron, which is a form, of a proprietary form of hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid is a very flexible, almost polymer-like substance found in humans in your synovial fluid of joints. It's also found in rooster combs this part of your ear that is uh, very soft and, and fleshy, and it, it is nature's lubricant. And what we found out was that if you mix the three together, you could get a very small pill, and that small pill, if you take it once a day, uh, after about seven days, and we call it Flexmo MD, you may see it at your, uh, in your internet shopping center or on Amazon or at your local drugstore as somebody else's brand, but it's licensed from Valenza. And that product uh, is very effective, and after about seven days, you already start feeling better joint comfort. And uh, we're not making any drug claims for this. We're not saying it reduces pain, but we did a clinical trial. I spent 26 years in the pharmaceutical industry. And during that time, I was involved in developing of many, many drugs, well over 10 drugs, including uh, development and manufacture of ACT, the first AIDS drug, valcyclovir, the first herpes drug. And, uh, and after all those years, I knew how to design clinical trials. And so we designed a clinical trial on Flexpro MD that was of pharmaceutical grade. And in the trial, we, of course, you have to have placebo. Uh, and so we used the sugar pill as a placebo. We also had uh, glucosamine chondroitin, the standard of care today in the supplement world. And we went up against placebo and, and, and uh, glucosamine chondroitin. So who typically suffers from joint pain? Well, uh, in, this, in this clinical trial, all the people that came into it had joint discomfort, not necessarily joint pain. And typically people that are uh, diabetic or pre-diabetic, a very large percentage have joint issues. Uh, people that are overweight, certainly uh, the more load-bearing you have on a joint, the more chances are of you having discomfort. 
uh, age-related, uh, bad diet. Uh, the other thing, very typical, and in my own family this has happened too, is a childhood injury, football injury, soccer, soccer injury, and then it doesn't manifest this. I mean, the damage is done, but you're young, you're, you're, you know, you bounce back, but then in your older age, uh, there may be manifestations. So what we did is all the patients that came into this uh, had uh, a joint discomfort or had trouble bending over or walking any sort of distance or, and there's, a, there's two tests involved. One is called WOMAC, and that is a clinically proven model for measuring uh, joint pain and joint movement, and this is used by the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, Womack was used in the Celebrex tr the clinical trials for various antiarthritic drugs. The other one is called VAS testing, and VAS is a computer-driven self-assessment program uh, where you assess your joint discomfort once a day, and uh, we're not necessarily looking at pain here. And at the end of 14 days, we already saw the uh, FlexPro MD group head and shoulders above the other two groups. And by the way, there is a placebo effect because psychologically about 20% of the people will have improved joint comfort no matter what they take. So the, the placebo effect is 20%. At the end of 66 days, uh, uh, sorry, at the end of 60 days, 59 days actually, 66% of the uh, FlexPro MD people were considered pain-free, okay, by the WOMAC testing. Now, we're not making uh, claims about pain. We're, we're making claims about joint comfort, which is not the same thing as joint pain. But according to WOMAC, they were pain-free, 66%. Now, even some of the pharmaceutical drugs could not achieve those numbers. And we didn't test them against the pharmaceuticals, but in clinical trials that you can read about in the literature, you, you saw that. And placebo, placebo and glucosamine chondroitin were about the same. So glucos, glucosamine chondroitin, a $800 million business in the United States, we showed that it does not work. Okay, and it doesn't work. It may work in a few people, but that might be the placebo effect. Would FlexPro MD be suitable for athletes? Uh, absolutely. Athletes are, are, you, are uh, prone to inflammation of the joints due to usage and also impacts. Uh, the only sport I would say is, is less susceptible to joint issues or injury is cycling because of the non-impact rotational type of thing. That's why cycling at health clubs is so good for you because you're not impacting joints. I know that runners, uh, I know several runners, in fact I, I run also. As you get older you shouldn't run as much, you should bicycle. Uh, but runners also have reported uh, excellent results. And I might say that this is a synergistic formula. It's got three components, each one that works slightly different. And the reason why we were able to uh, obtain four U.S. patents on this is because though each one of these has independently been shown to have some benefit in joint health, the three together have a synergistic effect and it's beyond what is expected. You can only patent things that are not really expected. And so uh, this is a revolutionary product. We've sold over 200 million doses of this already in the last couple of years. It's the fastest growing uh, joint health product in Europe, and especially in the German-speaking countries. Older populations, more joint issues, okay. Japan, uh, and in the United States, it, it's doing very well. Dr. Rudy, I've noticed when I go into drugstores, there's a huge variance in prices. Um, can we talk about that? Yes, yes, of course. I think that's a really important uh, subject. Now, we've talked about the fact that our clinical trial showed that after 60 days, about 59 days actually, that 63% uh, of the people in the trial were, were pain-free according to WOMAC testing. We're not making a, a, a pain claim, we're just saying have good joint comfort. Whereas in the placebo group and the glucosamine chondroitin group, it was about 20%, which is the placebo effect. So glucosamine chondroitin, the stuff you buy at the drugstore, 
with other things in it like Boswellia and some other things to change the marketing pitch uh, does not work basically compared to the sugar pill. And But you can buy this for $12.95 or $19.95, but it doesn't work. I mean, it just doesn't work. And you have a salt burden, you're, you're eating a shellfish, ground up shell, uh, shrimp shell uh, crust. And our product apparently works in most people, and it's more expensive. It's $29 to $39 approximately. I don't set the prices. The people that market our product, and you may not see this Flex Pro ND, but the ingredients I, I listed, krill oil, uh, astaxanthin, and flexuron are on the label, and it's going to cost more, but we believe that there's an excellent chance that you will have increased joint comfort, and it's well worth the money to do that. Thank you so much for educating us on Flex Pro MD. Dr. Rudy, pleasure talking to you again. It's a pleasure talking to you. Thank you.